What's going on, everybody? I just finished watching AEW Revolution. We have a new world champion. John Moxley did it. They, they finally took the belt off Chris Jericho. And that is a fantastic thing. And it's not because Chris Jericho has been a bad champion. It's because it's perfect timing. Because of what Vince and WWE just did on Super Showdown with their title belts and their younger talent. Not saying John Moxley's young, but he is in his prime. And Chris Jericho put him over, put the strap on him. That's how that's that's how wrestling's supposed to work. Let's get into the match. Let's get into the festivities. First of all, the entrance. All right, my, my one problem I've always had with AEW is, uh, and it, it still exists, their production is not great. I guess they're still working on it, you know what I mean? So m maybe it'll get better in time. I'm hoping it will because the production still struggles. <laughs> For example, but they do try. They have creative ideas. They just don't, I don't know if they don't have the budget or whoever does the, the outsourcing just isn't very good at finding the right people. For example, the Inner Circle Choir, they had a choir do Chris Jericho's theme music, like to give it a nice NXT-style championship entrance. The problem was, this choir sucked. This choir was not very good, so uh, it, it came off, it didn't come off well. Not to me. It, it just wasn't very good. But, I, 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 I appreciate the effort to try to make things seem grand. And on the flip side of it, their bad production sometimes pays off for good moments. Like when John Moxley won the belt, after the match he grabbed a mic and was like thanking the AEW crowd and the AEW family. And then the music, <laughs> some, some guy in the back hit, a, hit John Moxley's entrance music. So like, I guess the signal cutting off the show. <laughs> John was not done yet. <laughs> you you hear him say, "What the fuck?" And they 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 turn the music back off, and he has like one or two beer jokes, and then it's it's over. But stuff like that, that's great moments. It's a nice, it gives a free flowing atmosphere, not overproduced like a uh, WWE can be. So that's good. But damn it, can we get better choirs? And it's the small things. Better entrance music for most of these wrestlers. It, it comes off looking cheap a lot. Let's, let's stop that. But let's get into the match. This was a... It was a slobber knocker. It was slow. It was rough. It was bloody. And that's what I need from AEW's pay-per-views. I need it to be PG-13 to the max. Because that's the one area they can beat WWE in. WWE can't go, PG, can't go PG-13. Like, you'll see blood once every four years in WWE. Here, it feels like I'm watching the Attitude Era again. And that's, that's what people want. That's what they need. That's what they crave. Because WWE doesn't provide that anymore. Makes you feel like I'm watching a product that's for adults. And uh, that's what this match was. It was slow. It was not exciting. It was not a bunch of flips that usually AEW does. A ton of uh, Canadian destroyers and stuff. Nah. There was only, I think, one wrestling move in this match that wasn't a finisher. And I think it was a back body drop from Dean Ambrose late in the match. That was it. That was it. Besides that, clotheslines, punches, kicks, Irish whips, throwing people into barricades, hitting them with stuff, uh, power bomb through a table. That's kind of a move, but you know what I mean. It's through a table. It's different. And speaking of an Irish whip, Jericho early in the match threw uh, Moxley headfirst into a ring post, and I don't know if he purposely hit his head or if. He covered it and then quickly bladed. I'm assuming he just quickly bladed. But it 
it was fast. He was bleeding very quickly. And uh, after he's busted open, the, the match, of course, picks up steam. Jericho power bombs him through a table on the outside. A ring bell was on the table, and I think it rolled across the the his head, across the cut, because then it really started gushing. Like He was bleeding pretty good right over the eye patch. Great visuals, great visuals. And again, that's what they need to keep doing because that's what the other company cannot do. Keep it up. And then they fought a bunch on the outside. Really, the majority of this match happened outside the ring. And it was not even with like big spots. Punches, kicks, knees. Again, throwing each other around. It was more like a fight. That's what it felt like. It felt like a fight. And I appreciate that. I want that more. Because too many times there's grudge matches and then we see like superplexes. What the fuck? You're not going to superplex someone in a fight. Fight. So that was cool. And then when they got in the ring, of course, Jericho's shenanigans happened. Here comes uh, Jack Hager, Jake Hager. The ref gives the most flamboyant ejection I think I've ever seen in the history of wrestling. She does a full Dusty Rhodes arm thing. Does a fucking 360 and then points to the back and sends Jericho's crew away. I giggled, so I'm okay with it. Even though it did look pretty stupid. But that's fine. I chuckled. And uh, as she's throwing them out, um, Moxley turns around and Sammy, boop, title, I think it was. I think he hit him in the face with the championship belt. Right in, the, right in the dome. It looked nice. Man, title shots to the head always look good for some reason in wrestling. They always have. They just look good. He rolls out, drops the title, gets the hell out, runs, escapes, I guess, through the crowd. It's kind of strange. Code breaker. Kick out, which the only, the biggest problem in this match was the crowd never believed in any of the near falls. They didn't. Like, you know that feeling of, oh no, shit, Jericho's gonna win again. One, two, kick out, and everyone loses their minds. Nah. They, like, kind of knew. Like, these weren't beautifully done. You know what I mean? I don't know if it was... I don't know if that... I mean, the match had time. So I, I wouldn't say that it should have happened, like, gotten more time into the match, but maybe... Like, more big maneuvers should have happened to make people believe that there was a chance Dean wasn't going to... Dean... I apologize. I keep doing that. That John Moxley wasn't going to kick out. Because I knew he was going to kick out. And you could tell by the crowd reaction, everyone knew. Every single time. It was like we didn't get to that climax yet to where we would actually believe there's a chance. You know what I mean? And then... At the end here, this is the big finale that everything's been building to. The eye patch involvement. And I think they they didn't do it right. They did it the way I think they wanted to do it, but I don't think that was the way they should have done it. Like, I'm not calling it a botch. This was what they planned. I just think it was stupid. I do, because... uh. And again, the match was good, so I'm not hating. I'm just I'm nitpicking here. Uh, he has the eye patch on his right eye. He's been wearing it for quite a, quite a while now. It is to show that he can't see. And the, the whole booking and build here is, how is he going to see that elbow coming? How is he going to see the elbow? He can't see. His peripheral vision on the right side is all fucked up. But then, in the end, Jericho goes for his uh, the Judas effect, the elbow. He spins... Dean ducks it and hits him with a paradigm shift. One, two, three. Wins. Or, uh, no, he ducks it. Knocks him down. Or, no, he ducks it. Paradigm shift, my bad. And then doesn't pin him. Takes off the eye patch. And clearly tries to make it obvious to the fans and everybody that he can see. That he was playing Jericho the whole time. And then does another paradigm shift. Pins him. One, two, three. Clever idea, but the execution was terrible because the eye patch was still on when he dodged the paradigm, when he dodged the Judas effect. So, even if your eye worked, you wouldn't see it coming. 
You know what I mean? It was still blocked. You still had the goddamn thing on. That didn't make sense. You took it off after you dodged. Now you're showing people your eye works. It's like, well, it's like, okay. You already dodged. We need the eye now just to do another finisher. You already made it. You already dodged it. And how'd you dodge it when you couldn't see with the with the eye patch? That didn't make sense. They just good idea. They they kind of they kind of fucked up the execution though. I hope you guys know what I mean. I know it's nitpicking, and it is, but I noticed it immediately. Like, ah, oh, you probably should have, like, had like Jericho should have been beating him up late in the match, and ripped the the eye patch off and tossed it, and then like done some like eye manipulation to make the crowd go ooh and ah, and hit keep hitting him in the right side and Dean not see it coming, and then when you go for the juice effect. Dean dodges and goes, nope, it does work, asshole, and then win the match. Instead, it was like, yeah, yeah, you dodged, but who'd you, you didn't trick anything. You, like, you unveiled the... You guys know what I mean. Yeah, it was great idea. Bad execution. Besides that, good match. I love these type of matches. I prefer these. I hope AEW does more slow matches. Because sometimes they go so fast... There's not a lot of selling. There's not a lot of storytelling. The psychology of the of the ring is kind of missing. Their main events of these pay-per-views, they've had any John Moxley match, like the John Moxley Kenny Omega match, or the Chris Jericho Cody Rhodes match, or Chris Jericho John Moxley match, have all had great ring psychology, great storytelling, just with one little hiccup at the end there with the eye patch. The order was wrong, but Besides that, I love these. I love when they do these. More, please, please give me more. And I'm excited. That's what you're supposed to do to end a pay-per-view. You pass the torch to the next hot topic. You don't take the torch from the hot young topic. Super showdown. Goldberg took the torch from the fiend, who was the hotter item. That doesn't make sense. Jericho's run was slowly losing momentum. Moxley was gaining it. They gave it to Moxley so he can keep going up. Jericho will be just fine because he's goddamn Chris Jericho. There you go. There you go. Hopefully next pay-per-view we get a multi-man match. would be kind of cool. Maybe a triple threat, fatal four-way. We've had a, good, a couple of singles. I want to see what they do with more. Let's elevate some of these people like Kenny Omega's. Adam Page again, back into the main event title picture. And if you are still here, let me know down below what you guys thought of this. The whole pay-per-view. I'll get into the rest of the matches very soon. I just wanted to get that off my chest. This match was pretty damn good. I wish huh, the other company would go back to PG-13 also. That's the main thing when I see this. It makes me feel nostalgic, warm, happy. Grimy, dirty, bloody. Makes me feel all of those things. And I absolutely love it. If you are still here, you are a real one. <laughs>